Hey, what's up? Leroy Ron here. Today I want to share with you something a little more fun and loose. I've been asked to do a loose video, something that really is kind of, I let the paint flow and do whatever it does and use a bit of a more random process. And here it is, uh, these garlic cloves aimed for somewhat of a realistic result, but for the light and shadow, but everything else is really thrown out the window. Uh, I hope you're going to enjoy this process. Very, again, fun and intuitive and fast too. So let's get to it. So I'll start with the drawing. Uh, now, to be honest with you, I actually filmed an entire process uh, that I wanted to tackle this same subject from a different angle, and I hated the result, so I just reshot this one uh, and thought I'd do it more loose or more fun for my, my own sanity's sake. So uh, as for the drawing, you see starting with the large shapes, then moving on to the smaller ones. The drawing process here is going to be really fast probably around a minute maybe uh, so doing all the bumps uh, indicating the garlic teeth um, and it kind of looks like a flower from the front and then we have that center section uh, and then just to indicate some of the separations then we have that second garlic clove garlic I don't know what you'd call that a uh, bunch of cloves uh, and these actually it's a bit more complex because you do see that stem coming through so you do have to make sure that you get that in. Uh, you see it doesn't come out of that initial oval too much because we're looking at it from above. So just get that angle kind of accurately in. And once you get all the bumps for the, the individual cloves, is that a clove and then the clove is made of teeth? I'm actually not sure. Uh, I'm indicating where the individual uh, teeth are and the cast shadow and some very loose shadows because the focal point here, that, that two garlic the garlics and then the area around it will kind of fade into the, the you know, just a more abstract feel to it. Okay, so I'm starting with indicating some of those um, general patterns of light and shadow. So I'm basically dividing it into some areas that are going to be left paper white, uh, <clears throat> while others are going to be um, in color and in varying colors in, for that matter. So I'm starting with that yellow. S thought I'd start light yellow and then gradually introduce red and gradually introduce blue and move in that kind of direction. But while I still have a small shape, I like to take advantage of that to really get those edges down and to make them interesting and to make them um, to make them a part of like because of the uh, the peel of the garlic there is this wavy texture on it its shape is uneven it's very thin and very wavy so you get all these stripes across uh, following the direction of the individual clothes or teeth um, and then as we move down so I switch to a bit more red and then I'm gonna mix uh, something that's a little more blue um, just brought in some water to blend that edge here. Uh, the process I was going to show you was supposed to be narrated real time, which is something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I did it and I just hated the result again. So uh, I ended up not using that. I do hope to do one soon that's narrated real time. It's been a while and I know it's beneficial. My bad. <laughs> so now for the bottom part, um, starting to cool off a bit, putting in some of the more of the blue. Right now, because this is a La Prima fun loose, I'm starting to work on the shadows and everything else already now. So I'm just merging that initial uh, shape with the shadow uh, and I'm going to push that shadow wet and wet to be even darker. You'll see it'll look really, really cool. And because my desk is at a very slight angle, things will flow down, but ever so gently. Uh, and I'm kind of wrapping up around that um, that part. Uh, around a lighter shape, uh, all the way up to the especially top right area of that uh, right garlic uh, so that I can show the contrast you see between that very light section of it and the dark background. That'll make it shape pop. Um, and this is a very fun way of painting and if you feel maybe constrained or rigid, give this a try. It can really help you just go for it and paint and look at the paint, enjoy it, see what it does on paper. See here, just intuitively, I'm like, I'm missing a bit of red. Let's introduce some red. Bam, put it wet and wet onto the shadow. On the other garlic, I'm starting with the shadow itself. So I'm I'm really mixing it up and going with whatever I feel like at the moment. And I think if you can get to a point where you can confidently do that and just enjoy yourself, uh, you will be able to also build the skills and, and everything else necessary to paint more detailed and more, you know, accurate works. Uh, but if you're very stifled and you have a hard time just doing this, just kind of throwing the paint around, 
uh, then then it can be a little difficult uh, to to build upon it. So I really want to encourage that kind of a free spirit uh, in you, in addition to being accurate and being deliberate, which I think I do show enough of too. Um, so now what I'm going to do is with this slightly cooler shape, uh, I'm going to in just a second grab a bit of the yellow and introduce a bit of warmth to the top areas that perhaps are more exposed to the light. So you see here, we have all of this section that's in the shadow, that's kind of the opening of the peel, and you see the, the individual uh, garlic cloves in that. I, I, I believe that's called a clove, and the individual one is called a clove, <laughs> but I'll, I'll get over it. Uh, now, there is the plate. In the plate, I'm going to represent very abstractly, as I mentioned. Uh, so I'm just trying to find a good point to cut through the garlic so that it's for maximum um, contrast. And this is a good point because it's the white area uh, and then I'm kind of turning it into the plate, but very loosely. Um, I'm gonna kind of recreate the shape of the plate, but not really. Uh, and I will later on kill off some of these white sections because I don't want them competing with my highlights on the garlic itself. Uh, so you will see me do some more work in that in those places but that's for later you know um defining the edge of that shape with a bit of a darker paint uh, a big part of painting more loosely is making the most of wet and wet so when you have a wet area you want to uh even as soon as possible i would say to pour in more paint in it uh even if it's for the sole purpose of uh perhaps adding more interest nothing more not necessarily you know being more accurate or anything like that. So I'm doing a bit of wet and wet under the shadow as well because it needs to be darker and I would like to not have to darken it again. Maybe just not significantly at least. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Yeah, so after the gas tanks painting, um, this one, <laughs> these two, even this one, they both kind of, aspects of, of them frustrated me. It's just because I set the bar high. Uh, so just something to share with you and be aware of. Look at how in the wet and wet it really spread out. That's that's such a cool effect. Now, but in any case, just to let you know, now everything is dry and I'm continuing working wet on dry. Okay. Within the shapes I'm drawing, I'm going to do wet and wet, but the paper is dry. So just as I was saying, after doing such a detailed and complex painting, and I still haven't finished it though, uh, by the way, uh, it's a bit hard to go back to quicker, you know, faster painting. So that's something I'm grappling with, uh, finding my own balance. I guess um, if you're going through the same thing, you're not alone. Um, but yeah, trying to really define that shape of that edge. And I know I've gone a little darker than, uh, than the reference photo. I just really wanted to capture that contrast over there. And once I'll darken the rest, it will have better context. It is darker, but it will also look much more uh, correct once I go there. Um, and especially for the lower section, you start to see a bit of cools there. Um, you start to see a little more of that gentle blue, um, perhaps some purpley areas. So I'm starting with the purple here, uh, trying to render the shape of that peel that's coming up from the top. Um, Trying to add a bit of warmth, just like I did for the second one, only this time it's not wet and wet, but next to it. Uh, so the top where the transition is from light to dark is yellow, and then down there it's going more purple. Um, ideally next to the bottom I will start uh, bluing it up a bit maybe, uh, but we'll see about that. Uh, one big part of this process will also be lifting. As you'll see in just a second, I'll, I'll lift a few details that I feel like, and here comes the blue, uh, I'll lift a few details that I feel like um, should be lighter, so kind of more of a highlight. And uh, that's, I forgot the name of the artist that I saw that works like most of his florals. Uh, was it Cambranelli? I'm not I'm not sure, sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting the name. Um, I also did, I think, a Painting Masters episode on him. He really works like that. He'll put in a shape and then he'll do wet and wet darks and lift. Uh, and the lifting part is so fun because you really get to... Uh, here, here we go, like this, boom, boom. And then you see it makes it lighter and it just looks good. And I'm going to do this for uh, a few more sections where it should be a little lighter uh, later on. But let us merge that with the shadow underneath. Um, one thing that... I do try and uh, let guide me in these looser processes is just the main focal point. So to me, it's more about how much interest and fun and energy can I get into the focal point itself 
and the rest kind of again fades into the distance. So I will devote a lot of time to these kinds of wets and wets. I will devote a lot of time to reworking a wash while it's still a wet. I will devote more time for that and then let the rest of the details take care of themselves. Um, I think less of an overall view of the scene is required, less of a bird's eye view is required for these, at least the way I do them, because I really let my loose processes guide me in terms of um, the focal point itself. Can I make it interesting? Can I make it look cool? You know, uh, Here I am lifting a bit, again, reworking that focal point is really important. Uh, and this is something I want to do more of, lifting, proper lifting. Um, and I think I'll have to figure out like a better, and I'm lifting where the clothes face the light a little more, right? Um, I'll have to figure out what's uh, some good colors that don't stain as much and are a little easier to lift. Uh, so right now it's starting to build context. It's still not, you know, not there. It's not done. There's a lot to, to do. Um, even though we're coming up on the third, uh, I guess, last third of the process. Um, but we do have the main shapes in and especially that clove that's to the right. That looks really good. I'm really happy with it. Uh, so I want to warm things up a bit here. As you can see, they're a little warmer. Um, but I'm, I've been struggling a bit with that balance. So I'm kind of trying to add a bit of orange and then connect it to some of the bluer shadows. We'll see how that goes. I don't even remember exactly what it looks like. But um, when you paint loosely, <laughs> things are going to be loose. So you can't complain too badly. I mean, a big part of it is that looseness and fun. Uh, but it just felt like a bit of yellow was missing. So I was like, why not? Let's put some yellow there. Uh, and then I merge it with a bit of a darker uh, shadow that's a little more to the bottom. I'm, I'm going to merge them more in just a few seconds. Some wet and wet for that opening there. Really important. Uh, because that's probably the darkest part on that <clears throat> left garlic. Um, and then sharpening that corner because it uh, contrasts with the garlic that's more in the front. Um, and yeah, this reference photo is good. Really, really good. I got it from Wet Canvas, the uh, Wet Canvas's um, reference library. There are some really good pics there for painting. So I highly recommend that. And I will link it down below, of course. Uh, and here in just a second, I'm going to merge top and bottom. Felt too, you know, broken off. So here we go. Adding a bit of highlights to that area as well. We're almost done, maybe two more minutes of process. Uh, softening some of that edge to the left to show how it's rounded. Uh, I'm gonna do some wet and wets for darker values probably to show the top of that stem and really show how that works. Um, but again, yeah, I told you I'll, I'll take care of the background here and, and uh, make it a little bluer. Uh, if you look at a reference photo, you will see that the light reflected on the glass is a little cool. Now, I don't have a light blue here. Uh, most of my lights are either yellows or reds, and then the blues are more in the dark. So I decided, why not? Let's flip it. And what's cool about this is that it's almost like a landscape with the sky that are blue, but in a still life subject. So it's fun. It's like the sky is reflected in that, uh, in that plate, which um, isn't something I do much of when I do stuff like... Uh, play, um, Better. I mean, still life. Uh, so it was a cool effect to kind of get in. Uh, very different from my usual. Uh, now I want to bring out this pattern of light and shadow. So you see there are a few interesting reflections there. Um, the edge of the the plate is dark. And here's the wet and wet I told you I'll do. Um, it just felt like darkening some sections there. Uh, I'm going to get that a little more accurately in the top. But in any case, I want to get the shape of that uh, plate on the edge and then also that pattern of light and shadow that's more towards the center, which is what I'm painting now. The blue is still wet, so you gotta come back with very thick paint to make sure that it stays there, it doesn't spread out too much. Uh, and then I'm establishing that edge of the plate uh, and very carefully around the shape of the garlic, that's where you really want to make sure you're not going over into the wider areas. Um, could probably darken the blues a little more just for better context, especially the blue in the top left corner, but that's fine. Uh, and then getting some of that pattern on the plate here to the top, uh, near the top section. But again, very loose, very, you know, not lo not lo that loyal to the, to the source. Uh, stronger contrast over there, felt like it was important. Uh, and you will be surprised to see the final scan, by the way. It looks so much better and, and, and much more... Um, much more saturated. A lot of the colors are seem to get lost in the filming. Uh, 
Uh, here I'm going to do some wet and wet just to bring out this rounded shape for the garlic clove. Should have used more blue there, honestly. Now Only now I figured it out. Blue there would have been perfect. Light blue could be contrast really nicely with the rest uh, with the details and everything. But I think it's pretty neat. Um, happy with the end result for what it is. Very loose, very different from my usual stuff. Even though sometimes I, I do paint loosely. Uh, but this is really like for still life it's very different. Uh, so let us remove the tape and take a look at the final result. Um, so yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. Could have darkened that blue top left corner for sure. Uh, now here's the scan, much more saturated as promised. That's just how it is. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up real fast, face to face. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to learn how to let go, enjoy the painting process and get the results you want, be sure to check out, as always, the frustration-free watercolor course. Link is always in the description box below. If you already got it, thank you so much. And if you can, take a moment, drop a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, and subscribe if you still aren't. And I will see you again in the next video real soon.